Hi, my name is Kamish Shalik, and welcome to the first episode of my Greek mythology podcast. This is going to be a series where I discuss some of my favorite Greek myths, different drifts that have happened as a result of those myths, and just, well, all around what makes Greek mythology so great, what makes it so influential, and overall, what makes me love it so, so much. Let's start with my favorite couple in Greek mythology, Hades and Persephone, and how that myth has drifted. The basic story has sort of remained the same. Persephone is the daughter of Zeus and Demeter, the goddess of spring, a mating goddess, basically with an overprotective as hell mother. And Hades, the god of the underworld, meets Persephone one way or another, either by kidnapping her or her stowing away in his chariot, and he falls in love with her. And eventually she falls in love with him. Or maybe she doesn't. It's, again, up to interpretation. Anyway, um, so Persephone ends up in the underworld somehow, and Demeter goes nuts because, well, she can't find her daughter. And because she can't find her daughter, she's like, you know what? The whole world can starve until my baby comes home. Which, I mean, that's called helicopter parenting, Demeter. You were the originator of that. Anyway. So, then, down in the underworld, Hades finds out about this. And he is unwilling to return Persephone to the world, to the surface for for one reason or another. And she either and she's either tricked or she willingly eats pomegranate seeds. Pomegranate seeds. And this is again varying depending on the version. She eats anywhere from three to six pomegranate seeds. Meaning she has to stay three to six months in the underworld. I prefer the six month version just because that seems a little more fair. Um anyway. So Demeter declares that as long as Persephone is in the underworld, no food will grow, and that the earth will be covered in snow. Now, because this is a Greek myth, it's not true everywhere with the six months of winter thing. Some places it's winter real year-round, some places never get winter. It really just depends on where you are in the world. But... um Like I said, this story has so many different versions, um, and it's actually been modernized quite a bit in recent years. Um, One of my favorite interpretations of the myth is the webcomic Lore Olympus, which is available online webtoon. And in this comic, Persephone is, well, for starters, it's a modernized version of the story in which Hades and Persephone meet by chance at a party, Because Hades saw Persephone and told his brothers, oh wow, she's even more beautiful than Aphrodite. Aphrodite heard this, got pissed, and so she called up her son Eros to get Persephone sloppy drunk and to put her in Hades' car. Hades doesn't notice Persephone is in his car until he gets home. And, well, they just kind of have this instant click in chemistry. There's no kidnapping, none of that. It's just a relationship beginning to form. Um, I will also say that within this comic, there are a lot of characters that I do and do not like, but we will discuss those in different podcasts where I talk about the Greek gods, specific Greek gods and their specific myths, but this episode is devoted to Hades and Persephone. Um, So some variations on the myth include Hades kidnapping Persephone, which is the most popular variation and the one that is most widely accepted as factual. Um, And the circumstances behind this kidnapping vary from Hades saw Persephone, realized how lonely he was, and just wanted to marry her, so he gets permission from Zeus to kidnap her. Now, a lot of people have an issue with this kidnapping thing in the first place. Well, um, with the kidnapping... um, Back in the ancient Greece, when this was going on, it was actually considered culturally acceptable to kidnap your wife. Okay, yeah. Um, 
and um, and myths uh, mythology actually suggests and historical records actually suggest that it was the Christian that it was Christianity who put the whole kidnapping thing in there and that in reality Persephone actually went quite willingly with Hades because she had an overbearing overzealous helicopter mother who was like you're gonna be a maiden goddess forever and you're gonna hang out with Artemis and Athena and nothing's gonna stop that to which Persephone was like uh ha ha no mom I'm gonna go become queen of the underworld screw you um Now, in characterizations, Hades and Persephone have kind of had a lot, a lot over the years. Persephone has been characterized as a damsel in distress in some form or another, and she's also been categorized as like a wilting daisy type girl. Please excuse my pun. Um, actually, don't. Puns are my thing. Um, but in more recent years, Persephone has taken on more of a sassy, rebellious type personality, which I think works so much better. Um, and then as for Hades, well, uh, he's the god of the underworld. What did you expect, people? Oh, God. Um, probably his most famous form at this point in time because of the Disney movie Hercules would be a shady trickster villain. Now, trust me, I hate this characterization because Haiti, well, I both hate and love this characterization. I love it because, well, he has some really great lines. Uh, he's fun to watch, and it's really fun to just watch him do his thing. But I have a problem with it because that's not who Hades is. Hades is not a villain. Hades is actually a fairly decent guy who does his job, keeps his promises, and loves his wife. People just are afraid of him, and they think he, him, of him as a bad guy because, well, he's the god of the underworld. People also forget he's the god of riches, and the fact that just because you're the god of the underworld doesn't mean you aren't powerful or... Oh, Oh boy, they knew he was powerful, though. And um, they knew he was powerful because every dead person ended up in the underworld. And um, because every dead person ended up in the underworld, that means he had a lot of dead people, a lot of subjects. And because he had a lot of subjects, that meant that if there were ever a war, it would be his, it would be his army that was the most powerful. And um, some other interesting um, facts about Hades is the fact that while he was, you know, the, um, the god of the underworld and a really nice guy, that didn't mean he was below, above getting his hands dirty from time to time, like, ever. Um, one of these famous cases is the case of Sisyphus, a king who decided, you know what, I'm going to murder all my guests when they come to visit. How about that? And so he did, and the gods saw this gross but violation of hospitality rules, which were, like, hella important in Greece. Uh-huh, Greece was called Hellas, and it used to be called Hellas back then. Um, and so they were like, okay, what are we going to do about this? And Hades said, let's just kill him. That, that seems like the simplest and most, like, straightforward solution. So they're like, okay. So according to the myth, Hades is either Sisyphus, there are just these special adamantine chains that are, that are sent to restrain Sisyphus. And depending on the telling, it's either... Thanatos, the god of death, or Hades himself, who goes to um, retrieve Sisyphus, and either and whichever one it is ends up chained in a trunk for like a month and a half, and and because that's the case, nobody can die, and this pisses off Ares because there's no fun in war if nobody can die, and so eventually, 
the Hades or Thanatos is freed. And um, because of this, everything can die again. Sisyphus ends up dead, but he makes his wife promise to desecrate his corpse. So that happens, and then he says to Persephone, Oh, Persephone, it's horrible. My wife just threw my body in the street instead of giving me a funeral. And Persephone's like, Okay, you can go back to Earth for three days to get your affairs in order. He does not come back in three days. He comes back years later, and he ends up in Tartarus for pissing off Persephone, Hades, and or Thanatos. Now, I think something important to note about Hades and Persephone is that they actually did have a kind of a court, I guess you could say, a court of underworld gods. And within that court were um, the goddess of magic, magic and crossroads, Hecate. Um, there was also Thanatos, of course. And there were also their children, And one of those was Zagreus. And then these are so, this is a list of some of the other gods, goddesses that go that are in the within the honor world. There's Charon, who is the boatman. Hypnos, the god of uh, Hypnos, who is the god of sleep. Um, then of course there was also there were also the Fates, the Moire, and there were also the Humanities, or the Kindly Ones, or the Furies, as they're better known. Also among the gods in the underworld was Hermes, listed among them. And now the reason for Hermes being listed among them was because he was a psychopomp or, you know, a guide of the dead. And then um, there was also Nyx, the goddess of night. And this was just a small faction of the court because there were also nymphs in the underworld, of course. Because there are nymphs freaking everywhere. Anyway. Um, so with all these gods in the underworld... So, you know, there's all these gods in the underworld, and it's kind of crazy just how many gods there are. Um, there were also three god three judges in the underworld known as Minos, Rhadamanthus, and Isaias. And they were basically judging people, judging the dead who came there. And then there is Melanoe, who is supposed who is mo probably the daughter of Hades and Persephone, but it's also been but it's also seen that she's been called she's also been called the daughter the daughter of Zeus and Persephone and according to this myth Zeus actually took on the form of Persephone's husband to sleep with her yeah damn all right these are just like like I said these are just a few of the gods um, as for the underworld itself, um, there were multiple levels to it, which I'm sure most of you have heard of. There was, um, there was the field, there was the sticks, which was basically the barrier of the underworld and made up the lost hopes of humanity. There was Kokitos, which was the river of whaling. Um... There was Acheron, which I believe was the river of forgetting, but don't quote me on that. And then there was, um, then there were the three main areas of the underworld, which were the fields of Ashbodo, Ashbodo, which were essentially, basically, hey, you were middle of the road. You weren't super evil, but you weren't like a blessed person either. Or you haven't been reincarnated three times yet. Next is Tartarus, which is arguably one of the more famous areas of the underworld, um, where the worst of the worst of humanity go when they die. 
um, and they are usually given some punishment. For instance, Sisyphus, who I mentioned earlier, had to roll an enormous boulder up a hill, and every time he gets to the top, it rolls back down again, and he has to start over. And that's just an example of one of the many punishments that are given to people in the underworld. Um, but yes, those are some of the myths of Hades and Persephone, and here is one, uh, two more, actually, before we go anywhere further. Um, Persephone is mentioned in quite a few myths. Like, seriously, she's mentioned in more myths than she is actually a major player. But um, there was one myth um, about Hades and Persephone's relationship um, because it is well known that Hera, as queen of the gods, would often take revenge on the children of her husband's lovers or her husband's lovers themselves. Well, Persephone didn't really do that because Hades didn't really have any famous affairs like, like Poseidon and Zeus did, and Poseidon's wife was like 100% okay with it. And to be honest, Persephone was actually kind of okay with it too. She was like, you can take a couple lovers, just don't be with them when I'm here. Which, considering she was I, she was out of that out of the underworld for six to nine months, depending on the version, um, that was understandable, you know? And so Hades, the one affair that Hades is famous for was, was with the nymph, Myth. And Myth, well, she was totally okay with, she was like, yeah, I'm okay, I'm cool, I'm with the god of the underworld, yeah. And, but here's the thing, and here is a warning, never, ever, ever, ever piss off a god or goddess, particularly if that goddess is the goddess of spring. Because she actually has quite a bit, bit of a temper. Um, anyway, in this famous affair, um, Minth began bragging that she was more beautiful than Persephone. And that Hades was going to divorce Persephone and make her, the go Minth, the, god of the, the goddess of the underworld. Well, understandably, Persephone heard this. She was not happy. And so... She actually turned Minth into the mint plant. So thank you for that, Minth. You gave me my favorite ice cream, one of my favorite ice cream flavors. Um, but yeah, like I said, Hades and Persephone are mentioned in far more myths than they're actually major players in, particularly Persephone, because she's mentioned in most stories involving the underworld, she's mentioned. She's mentioned in the legend of Orpheus and of Eros and Psyche, and she and she's called the Dread Queen Persephone by many many heroes who venture into the underworld. And you know she's, by all accounts, she and her husband are very good rulers with a remarkably functioning relationship, and she's also the only queen of a realm to possibly cheat on her husband with a human with a mortal named Adonis. Now, of course, that um that didn't work out too well for her, but whatever. Well, I think that's enough Greek myths for today. I've spent almost 20 minutes talking about my favorite couple in Greek mythology and how they had a super functional relationship and they were pretty much like I actually go so far as to call them the golden couple of Greek mythology because they have more to them than any other couple. <coughs> but, um, yeah, I think that's enough for now. So, until next time, I'm Camille Sleek, and thank you for listening to my Greek mythology podcast. Good night! <laughs>